Under the same roof is a new uh, ESRC funded project uh, which is starting in the Morgan Centre here at Manchester. The aim of the project is to compare and contrast a range of contemporary forms of communal living in the UK to consider the circumstances under which communal living becomes more or less successful. The broader backdrop to the project um, relates to issues such as uh, quite dramatic trends in household format, patterns in household formation in recent years, um, changing patterns of uh, housing transition, not least the inability for many people to um, buy a house of their own on a single income, uh, increasingly difficult for young people in particular to, to achieve that, that aim. As a consequence, there's been a growing interest in alternative housing tenure in the UK, including cooperative housing forms, mutual housing forms. Uh, and these are seen as having a particular role to play in meeting some key uh, societal challenges, such as financial sustainability, environmental sustainability, and also social sustainability in a context where many people are living alone. There are also a number of push factors in relation to recent government policies around benefits, and specifically housing benefit, uh, which are uh, leading many people to move into shared contexts, perhaps against their, against their, their, their wish. Uh, for example, the fallout from the bedroom tax may mean that increasing numbers will rent out rooms. In fact, the government gives a tax break to those who rent out, rent out rooms, more generally. Um, the extension of the shared accommodation rate from the previous cap of 25 to age 35, again, has created a situation where more people will find themselves uh, sharing, perhaps not through choice. We want to look at shared living in four specific contexts. Uh, private lodgings, um, where there's a disparity normally in, in the legal status of, of the house, householders. Uh, shared households, uh, which might be shared households in the private rented sector or jointly owned households. Um, then we want to look at perhaps more intentional forms of communal living in the form of small housing co-ops. And finally, co-housing. Co-housing developments are resident controlled developments consisting of uh, individual homes but with some shared facilities provided in a common house. Firstly, our focus will be on the economic aspects of shared living, focusing on the extent to which um, financial and other resources are shared between householders. Uh, the second element is the temporal dimension of shared living, the extent to which people spend time together, but also the way in which households may develop um, rituals and traditions over, over a longer term period and the way in which shared housing may feature across a person's life course. The third element relates to spatial aspects of shared housing and the allocation and use of space, both um, shared and private space within shared housing. And finally we want to focus on the ideological facets of shared living, by which we mean the extent to which different forms of communal living are underpinned by some degree of intentionality, uh, or perhaps more residually, uh, those living arrangements might be based on some sort of shared characteristic. By looking at these four facets across four very different types of shared living arrangements, we hope to look at the way in which these different configurations come together to create different forms of, of, of shared living, some of which may be more or less successful um, and more um, feasible uh, as living arrangements. But we're going to conduct the research through using a range of qualitative, qualitatively driven mixed methods uh, including interviews with householders across around 80 different contexts, um, plus a range of more creative methods with sub-samples of, 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 of the, um, the participant population. Um, and these will include methods such as time use diaries, spatial mapping techniques and object inventories. Overall, then, we think we will be able to contribute to a number of important debates within the sociology of relationships and personal life, including the limits and possibilities of non-kin relationships, as well as the broader debates within sociology on, on the possibilities of, of cooperation. Uh, there's also, of course, a very strong policy dimension to, to this research, and we hope to be working closely with the members of our advisory group to make the most of those opportunities.